All right, so we're going to be doing some more scenario construction. And what we're going to be doing now is working with calendars. And so unfortunately, at the time of recording, Google Forms is not really working too well with Make at the moment. So I'm going to be using this spreadsheet instead with uh, fake emails and just fake information all the way around. But we're going to be using this to fill up our calendar events that we're going to be creating in Outlook in a little bit. So once you go ahead and go to create a new scenario, you'll get to this same screen as me. And we're going to start off, of course, by naming our scenario. So we're going to call it construction one, or actually construction two, working with calendar events. Kind of a mouthful, but that's okay. So the first thing we're going to do is create the Google Sheets module. And we're going to be doing all the way at the bottom, get range values. Once we do that, you will have to go ahead and create your connection. I'm going to select a spreadsheet from the list in the Google Drive. And once it's all linked up, selecting the sheet name and starting the range. So if I go back here, I'll be using values from A2 to G4. So I'll go ahead and type that in a two to G four and for a table containing headers, you don't have to check this, but it's always a good idea to, and I'll show you why in a second. So it'll be from a one to G one and okay. So what we can do, uh, instead of having to complete the scenario, I can right click this and go to run this module only. And with this do it, it'll, it's going to run this single module give me the bundle here and you'll see the different results. And so I have one bundle, two bundles, three bundles, just like here for each individual row that I asked for. And you can see it has the information. And so this is why we clicked table contains headers. If I go here, row with headers, or yeah, table contains headers and then selecting the rows with headers. You can see that in the results, it actually has the headers labeled for you. So name, email, subject, date in the same order and it has in the parentheses the column, as you can see here. So that is definitely a useful feature. Again, you don't have to do it. Sometimes your table isn't going to have headers, which is completely fine. It's not necessary, but you can because it does make things easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so I have all the information. I've gone ahead and confirmed. And so now what I'm going to do is create the 365 calendar module. And what I'm going to be doing is creating an event. And I have my connection established already. So I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and select calendar for calendar ID and then just mapping out the individual variables. So I have subject for subject, of course, for start date and end date, it's going to be the same thing in this particular module. There is no setting for time, at least from what I could find. So, uh, meeting time, uh, meeting start and end time isn't really necessary. Uh, however, that's okay. So I'm going to set reminder on again, not necessary, very optional. So for 15 minutes before the start of the event, and then for location, I'm going to go ahead and put the meeting location. And that's just about everything. However, for a little bit of customization for attendees, I have the names and email addresses. Again, these are all fake email addresses. So I'll go ahead and map them below one for the attendees email and one for the attend attendees actual name. And if you want in the body content, you can go ahead and put in meeting with, and you can go ahead and put this and this will have in the body content, the full name meeting with whoever you're meeting up with for the body. So again, another optional step, not necessary, but for the sake of customization, it's definitely useful. And so by this point, Everything is just about done. I can't test this by itself because it'll only give me one result and we want to see if it works with the entirety of the Google sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and click run once to see if it works. And it does. So you can see that we have three results because we used three different rows, one for Jonathan, one for Toby and one for Amy. So if I go here, you can see the different results. The first one has a bundle for the meeting with Jonathan and so on and so forth for 
Toby and Amy. And one way I can also check to make sure that it ran uh, successfully is to go to my sheet, look for the date. So January 9th, 2023, going to my Outlook calendar and actually going to 2023 for January. And if I go here, I can see daily warm up, which is the first subject that I have here, the first meeting subject on January 9th, one for the HR review session and one for product testing and review. And you can see it says here on the body, meeting with Amy West, meeting with Toby Claymore and meeting with Jonathan Grant. So that is one way you can do or uh, automate meetings using Google Sheets, or you can use Google Forms if whenever you're doing it, Google Forms is working.